Hi everyone, Azrael Knight here and welcome to day 11 of a fortnight of film, a vlogging marathon where I shoot a different roll of film every single day. And if you don't know, this is from a successful Kickstarter campaign brought to you by dozens of generous donors. And before we get started today, I'd like to acknowledge some other donors that you might not be aware of. In addition to the Kickstarter donors and my Patreon pledgers, I've actually had some direct donations. I've had PayPal donations, and I've actually had some uh, mail-in donations, and I'd like to acknowledge those people as well. Let's start with the PayPal donations. I just want to acknowledge that any type of contribution that you make to the channel is super appreciated, um, but directly donating money to the channel is a huge way that you can support what I do and make sure that these episodes keep coming and increase the quality of the episodes. I always have a link in the description to a direct donation through PayPal and a dollar, five dollars, whatever you want to give, I will be so grateful. And it, I mean, trust me, it goes right back into the channel. In one way or another, it goes right back to the channel. So I want to thank Alexander Kovalenko. Thank you, Alexander. I really appreciate your donation. I want to thank Amro Gibriel. I'm really sorry for the pronunciation of these two names. I, I practiced before, um, and I don't think I got it. But, I mean, you know, you know who you are. Thank you so much. I want to thank Jacob Calling. Jacob Calling, I really appreciate your donation. And I want to thank Tony Z. Tony Z, thank you so much for your generous donation. And in addition to these fine gentlemen, I also had an anonymous donation, the biggest single donation that I've ever received. And they wanted to stay anonymous, so I will respect that. But you know who you are. Thank you so much. Next, I want to acknowledge mail-in donations. This comes from Donald Darris from Ohio, and I really appreciate this. We have some Kodak Technical Pan, expired 2004, some medium format Kodak Technical Pan that expired in 2005, a roll of Fujichrome Forsha. I want to say Forsha, but it could be Fortia SP120 film that expired in 2006, and a roll of Fujicolor Natura 1600. Expiry unknown, but I'm going to assume by the others, it's probably around the same time. David, thank you so much for your generous donation. Super appreciated. Next, I would like to acknowledge Khalil Milner of Alaska for donating this fascinating roll of Sears Tower Pan 120 film. I've never heard of anything like it. Uh, apparently it used to go for super cheap, like 75 cents for a roll of three. Um, it says here, develop before March 1965, so this is a very expired roll of film. Uh, they explained to me that they get good results from ISO 50 or ISO 25, and that I should probably keep it to a uh, half-strength stop bath to avoid um, the emulsion melting, and that the tape needs to be reinforced before I load it. It'll be a bit of a song and dance to get this film going but I look forward to shooting it. They left me a really nice um, handwritten letter. When do you get those anymore? I just want to say, pal, your, your writing does not look like chicken scratches. And the fact that you had three pages without seemingly any mistakes is pretty amazing. So thank you for that. Really appreciate your donation. Next donation is by um, Kickstarter backers Rowan and Riley. And they were able to get some Kodak 5071, expired in 2001, but supposedly frozen since purchase. And they've got them wrapped up here. I did unwrap one of them. It's a uh, re-rolled Kodak. And they also sent me a couple rolls of Ultrafine, Ultrafine Extreme 400 and Ultrafine Extreme 100. And detailed instructions on how they developed Kodak 5071. It is a ectochrome slide duplicating film, a tungsten balanced, low ASA, low contrast, and low grade slide film. 
So that'll definitely be interesting to try. They give me a lot of credit. It looks like quite the challenge, but I think I'm up to the task. Now, last but certainly not least, I want to acknowledge Francois Hosey or Jose, Hossi or Hosse. Very sorry, um, Francois. I really appreciate your donation. Francois donated three Soviet films and a developing kit. I would get some more details on this film later. He would donate this black and white, um, this color that can apparently be done in C41 at room temperature, and this slide film. Now, in addition to that, he donated a Orwo 5168 developing kit that has been discontinued. Now, the original plan was to use these films in that developing kit. Now, I did some research. Um, and by research, I mean, I asked you guys on Instagram what these films were. And apparently, none of them are specifically for Orwo 5168. But one of the people that helped me figure out what these films are was Al. And when I asked Al where I could get some color film that I could use in this kit, he offered to send me some film that he's had frozen and, and some other films as well. I literally just got an Instagram message from him in between takes here. He's going to FedEx this overnight. Hopefully I will be able to include an episode with this stuff before the end of the marathon. If not, you'll see an episode for it soon. This one's going to be really interesting because I'll put up some footage here. This was very nerve wracking to process. The developer alone took seven different powders and I'm like, I better get this in the right order. So I, I checked online, I asked people and I wore gloves, a mask and an eye shield. I was super careful and I changed gloves frequently. It was a very, very nerve wracking experience and and not for the faint of heart. There we go, guys. I hope you enjoyed those acknowledgements. I want to make sure that those people got some airtime on this marathon because they went above and beyond. I mean, mail and direct donations, those take some serious generosity. I just want to acknowledge that. Okay, moving on to today, I'm going to be shooting with Fujifilm Neopan Acros 2. At some point in the last couple of years, Acros was actually discontinued and there was a cry out from the analog community because they actually brought it back. I remember shooting my 35 millimeter roll of Acros and I absolutely loved the way it looked. So I can only imagine what it's going to look like in 120. I've seen the comparisons between Acros 1 and Acros 2 and the differences are very minor. Acros 2 has, if I remember correctly, better highlights. And that's about it. <laughs> Hard to complain there. As always, I'm going to be shooting with my Pentax 6.7. And due to the weather today, I'm not going to be changing my lenses. So I've opted for my 200 millimeter F4. So nothing to do now, but get this camera loaded and head downtown.
Okay, folks, that was enjoyable. As you know by now, if I'm downtown on the crowded streets, I will avoid talk time. I just don't want to be that guy. It is so windy out there. And it's only going to get worse. So there's been a weather advisory. And the weather advisory says that we're going to get... Uh, I believe tomorrow afternoon we're going to get... Like, icy rain. And then the weather is going to drop a whole bunch. And we're going to get like 10 centimeters of snow or something like that. I really enjoyed my time out today though. Uh, the East Village has changed a massive amount over the last 10 years. There is a world-famous library known for its funky architecture. Um, I think I caught it in at least a few photos. I practiced my reflections again. I got a couple of shots in the reflections. Really looking forward to this role. I have to say, I really love what Fuji does on a consistent basis. Yeah, confession time. Someone said in the comments that I should just suck it up. Um, not their words, my interpretation of their words. That I should suck it up and just buy an Instax SQ6 and shoot the square format of Instax. And I'm like, okay, sure. Uh, I went around town yesterday after shooting, looking for one in store, and I couldn't find it, but I did find a Prime Day deal, which, you know, um, so there's that, and it should be arriving today, and yeah, I know that the cameras are ugly, I still think they're ugly, maybe they'll grow on me. What's important is results. Well, results and money, a 10-pack of Instax Square is like $11.00. $11. I couldn't believe it. I thought, oh, maybe they're like 20 25 versus um, Polaroid, which I still think is around the $30 range. No. 10 or 11 bucks. And I think on the high end, I saw a pack for like 13 or 14 bucks. I couldn't believe it. And that was for a pack of 10, not a pack of 8 like Polaroid. I'm not willing to completely dismiss Polaroid at this point. Uh, however... I am really curious to see how these Instax Square hold up. Okay, with all that being said, nothing to do now but get this roll home and get it developed. Hey guys, so I'm just washing the negatives right now, and one thing that I have definitely noticed is that the Acros film requires more washing than your typical 510-20 Ilford wash method. So what I've done so far is 5, 10, 10, 20, and uh, yeah, it's, it comes out really purple. Here, here's an example of uh, what it looked like on the first go. Uh, the second one, the second one looked almost exactly the same, if not a bit more purple. Now we've got a really light pink, and I think I've mentioned this before. Some films, they just need more washing than others. It makes sense. I noticed it last time, I think, in a T-Max film. Um, Ilford's films tend to wash pretty clear. And where did I shoot with yesterday? I can't even remember what I shot with yesterday. Oh, yeah, that Kodak Double uh, X. The Kodak Double X came out pretty clean right away. You still want to do the 510-20 anyway. But uh, the water was clear right from the first pour out. Let's, uh, let's have a look and see what we got. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, pretty much what I expected. I don't generally get unpredictable results when I develop black and white, as I've done it way more than other processes. I'm going to hang these up to dry and see how they scan. You don't have to wait, though. Here are today's highlights and my contact sheet.
Well, everyone, I really hope you enjoyed those because I certainly did. I love, I love Acros film. If it wasn't for two things, it would be my favorite film. One is the price. It's a little expensive for me. And the second is it's a bit curly. It's uh, you got to. You got to fight with it a bit to get it onto your scanner. It has some curl. That's not a make it or break it for me. I shot Triax for a long time, and Triax is known for its curl. Uh, if there was a reason two and a half, I would say that it's a little harder to wash than some films. It's not so much of a 5, 10, 20 wash method as it is a 5, 10, 10, 20, 20 method. And I remember... Well, I don't remember. I looked at my video from 2017 or whenever I shot my 35 millimeter Acros video and I couldn't get the negatives clean and I thought it was the photo flow, but now I think I just didn't wash it properly. So anyway, I really, yeah, I really hope you enjoyed those photos. I did a couple more of those interesting reflection shots. And I think they turned out pretty good. There's a shoot through one I did as well through that upside down church you might have seen at the beginning of my montage. That upside down church sculpture actually used to be in Ramsey. And I've got a photo of it from like 10 years ago or something like that. So I thought that was interesting how they moved it to the East Village. There we go. Another episode complete. Day 11. There are now more days behind me than there are ahead. With only six days to go, I want to make sure I finish strong and give you guys some really interesting videos. And that's going to start with tomorrow's video. Now, if you look at my clock right here, it's 10.50 p.m. right now. I started late today. I had a bit of a nap. I finished up my scans and editing really late. But I sort of did it on purpose, and here's why. A couple of you have been asking if I plan to do night photography. And logistically, with scheduling, the only way I can really do it is right after midnight. The idea is I shoot the film between midnight and whenever, uh, and then I come home, crash, and then I develop in the morning or afternoon. And that's the plan. So I just finished an entire episode. I put out day 10 to my Kickstarter and patrons. I released day 8 to the public. And I finished editing day 11 right up until the highlights. And now I'm going to do day 12 in just a matter of an hour. Is that time even right? Yeah, that time's, that time's got to be right. Yeah, so in about an hour, I'm going to be filming again. So when you see tomorrow's episode, it's only going to be an hour from now. And you guys, I gave you guys the choice between two different uh, Vision 3 tungsten films. So it really makes sense that I'm going to be shooting at night with the uh, street lights and all that kind of stuff. I've had three cups of coffee already, so it should be interesting if nothing else. And until tomorrow... Stay classic. Well, not sure what I'm going to do now. 